Welcome to another spirit-filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video. As well, I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. Um, Dr. Lumide Manuel session. I just met a little just a five or so minutes and it was such an amazing time and then the worship again may the Lord do us good this morning in Jesus name again I remind you that conferences like this essentially grant us access to light because in this kingdom we arise and we shine only to the degree to which we obtain light he says, Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. So when we are bankrupt of light, it is impossible to be able to rise to that prophetic position that God intends for us. Hallelujah. I have profound regard and respect for any ministry that invests in the teaching of the word, because the only way believers grow is through the word. Hallelujah and that from a child thou hast known the holy scripture which is able to make you wise even unto salvation he says and now i commend you to god and to the word of his grace which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified hallelujah praise the name of the lord so yesterday we began to discuss um, two dimensions of Jesus Christ that we said were important for the efficiency of the believer. We looked at Jesus as Savior and then we looked at Jesus as King. Just a two or three minutes recap for the sake of those who are just connecting. And we said that there are a number of differences in those dimensions. For instance, when we deal with Jesus as Savior, the entire work of Jesus as Savior is captured in what we call the gospel of salvation. That is a revelation of his substitutionary sacrifice towards man and creation. And that when we reveal Jesus as Savior, man is revealed as a helpless person who is unable to attain unto a position of righteousness by himself. Are we together? man does absolutely nothing except to receive that which has been finished but then when we move to jesus as king the scenario changes jesus is now not just someone who is going to die he's an exalted king seated on a throne and man is no longer the weak helpless person but is now number one a son in the kingdom the son of the king and number two an ambassador are we together and we did say that we have a twofold mandate when we discuss jesus as king number one our mandate to the king we have an obligation to the king and number two we have a mandate from the king to the nations are we still together and we discussed that our mandate to the king is complete loyalty surrender and obedience as simple as it sounds it will take the engracing of the spirit for you to be able to do that hallelujah to get to a point where you can say nevertheless not my will but yours be done and i did tell us that when we deal with jesus as savior the gift is the same to everyone regardless who you are it is the gift of life eternal from the worst sinner to the most self-righteous person you you are given the same gift but when we now begin to discuss kingdom there are rewards you don't talk of rewards when you deal with jesus as savior everything there is a gift but when you come to the kingdom there are rewards and that those rewards are according to the degree to which you are submissive you are surrendered and obedient. I was so blessed hearing um, um, Dr. Lumide Manuel discourse on Deuteronomy talking about obedience. 
Deuteronomy 28 for instance from verse 1 and 2 it says it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all that I command you this day that you shall be exalted above all the nations of the earth and then that these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you there is a condition it says if ye be willing and obedient the bible says you shall eat the good of the land every land has good but your portion is delivered to you at the instance of obedience are we together the creed the law the modus operandi in the kingdom is obedience in fact in one word faith is defined as obedience that means whatever it is that you do in this kingdom if it does not translate to loyalty surrender and obedience then you are not going to get any reward in this kingdom and you will impede your own growth so i did tell us that there are rewards in this kingdom and then that we have our mandate and obligation to the king not just to worship him your worship is simply an expression of loyalty an expression of surrender and an expression of obedience are we together now this morning i want to discuss just to continue from where we left off that we have a mandate from the king so when you meet the king when you're done doing business with the king he leaves you with an assignment he leaves you with a mandate from him to the nations this is very powerful so you know responsible kingdom citizens because any one of them who claims to have met the king will always live with an assignment to the nations there is no one who meets the king and just says well i just worshiped him i love the king no if you meet the king there will be an assignment given to you we call it different names we call it purpose we call it kingdom advancement but it is the the mandate this is the desire from the heart of the king and like it was in isaiah chapter 6 when you read the bible says in the year that king uzziah died i isaiah saw the lord remember he says that he was high and lifted up then he began to describe that the train of his robe filled the temple there's no point discussing this but in ancient times the royalty of the king was also seen by the extent of his train so when he says the train of his robe filled the temple it was an attempt to describe the extent of majesty are we together and when isaiah saw him isaiah broke down and said woe is me for i am undone he called himself a man of unclean lips and that i dwell amidst the people of unclean lips the bible says one of the seraphs took a live coal and touched his lips and says your iniquity has been rolled away from you and then there was a call in heaven it says who shall we send and who shall go for us and isaiah said here am i send me this one is not a savior discussion this is the king desiring that something be done to the nations and a man is availing himself every time you see loyalty every time you see surrender and every time you see obedience you will always see power and you will always see results please do not forget this it is a modus operandi in the kingdom if you ever find power without loyalty obedience and surrender proceed and um, preceding it it is witchcraft you can simply test the genuineness of spiritual power by using the index of loyalty to god surrender to the king and obedience if you find these tripartite expressions preceding the manifestations of power and results it is authentic from god it is impossible to have access to genuine spiritual power that was obtained from the king by his spirit in the absence of loyalty the absence of surrender and the absence of obedience are we together hallelujah praise the name of the lord so our mandate from the king please write if you're writing our mandate from the king jesus as king now is to be an extension please write our mandate from the king is to be an extension 
of his wisdom, an extension of his power, an extension of his glory to the nations of the earth. The Bible simply describes us with respect to the king and his agenda as ambassadors and as witnesses. This is a very important concept you must understand. Our mandate from the king is to be an extension of his wisdom, to be an extension of his power, to be an extension of his glory to the nations. Hallelujah. This is what it means to be an ambassador. This is what it means to be a witness. Now, theologically speaking, believers are classified twofold. When we describe believers, theologically speaking, we describe believers, number one, according to identity, and number two, according to function. When believers are classified according to identity, the Bible uses descriptions like heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ. Are we together? In John 15, he says, I am the vine and ye are the branches. So when the Bible describes believers according to identities, it seeks to show the extent of our oneness with Christ, our union with God. Are we together? But then the Bible also describes believers according to function. This is where it now begins to use descriptions like you are the salt of the earth. Matthew chapter 5 from verse 13. And then it says you are the light of the world. You see that now? He calls us ambassadors. He calls us kings and priests according to Revelation 5 and verse 10. That we have been made unto our God kings and priests and we shall reign in the earth. The Bible calls us um, light and salt when you read Matthew chapter 5 Jesus teaching from verse 13 to 16 verse 16 says so then let your light so shine before men that they might see your good deeds and glorify your father in heaven when it has to do with believers described based on their function you would see that God seems to be passionate about believers producing a certain kind of results because he's been glorified is tied to the excelling of the believers for instance in John chapter 15 and verse 8 the Bible says herein is my father glorified when ye bear much fruit, he says, so shall you be my disciples. Verse 16 of the same chapter says, ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide or remain. Are we Bible students? So he desires that he be glorified. Every time there are results, every time believers excel in the kingdom, when they become an extension of his power and of his glory, all of the multifaceted dimensions that are captured in the king. Do you know the book of Esther? When you read the book of Esther, the book of Esther is a prophetic adumbration. An adumbration is a foreshadow, an acting of something that will actually happen. Are we together? You notice that the reason why Vashti was banished was because she forgot that her assignment there was to be a reflection of the king's glory. Now she had her own agenda and it was customary for the kings to flaunt their wives, their treasures, their army. And he now said that Vashti would come and present herself before his friends. And she embarrassed him, disappointed him. She had her own agenda. And the king, being a good man, did not drive her. He sought counsel from the elders. And they said, better drive this woman out of this kingdom. If you don't drive her, she's going to create a pattern that is inconsistent with your will. She will use her influence to make other women to start doing that too. And the king heeded to the advice and drove her away. This is an adumbration. When Esther came, remember, Esther also wanted to fall into that trap. And Mordecai reminded her. He said, don't forget that you are here with an agenda. She goes to meet the king, even though not invited. And by favor, the king lifts the golden sense and says, Come in. What do you want? If she said, I want your friend, her man, dead, they would have thrown her too. But notice how she approached him. She said, I, I'm here to flaunt your glory. I want to put a celebration for you, to honor you. And the king said, this is, this is exceptional. This is what I've been looking for. Are you getting the idea now? I'm here because of you. I want to serve you. 
I want, I want the nations to see the extent that you are king over 127 provinces. And would you grant me the permission to invite everybody, including your very good friend, Haman? Are we together? And so that celebration happened and the king's glory was so flaunted, he called her and said, repeat this again. Repeat this again. When she had proven her loyalty, when the king was no longer in doubt of her loyalty, she now met him and said, I have a request. And he said, say it. Whatever is your request, you have sorted. Now I, I mean, it's not easy finding a woman like you. Now that I have secured your trust, what do you want? He said, there is a man who is threatening my people. Who is that? Haman. Ah, Haman is my friend, oh but you are my wife what do we do now and the bible says a very wise king he entered the garden to think you see eh, when the realm of the spirit is against you he now came to beg her and the man came and caught him the king caught him around his wife and said on top of what i was discussing i've seen you doing no you are you are you are it's over for you he was begging how did i get here I'm discussing, <laughs> are we together? But you get my point now? That in this kingdom, you see, this Christianity of always approaching him, you're the line of tribe of Jews, he knows that you are just beating around the bush and say, God, I'm here again. This is my issue. You see that you are not, you are blind. You are powerful, but it looks like you are not seen. You see, those kinds of Christians never go far. But there are people who step in and, Lord, I'm available, I'm here for you. You use the wisdom of Esther. And the moment, listen, listen, the moment the king sees in experience that your heart and your life is all about his agenda, there is nothing he will not give you, including the things you did not ask for. This is a powerful secret. Our mandate, listen, is to be up and about becoming extensions of the king. Many of you here, this is, I mean, this is a ministry that is very strong in empowerment, especially financially. I know that many of you here own businesses. Let me ask you a question. When you want to downsize for whatever reason, what is the chief parameter that you will use in downsizing people? Inefficiency. Am I right on that? If you have a staff structure of, say, 50 people, and for whatever reason you want to downsize and take away five or ten people, if you are fair and just and honest, you will use the index of inefficiency. Who is in this company who has been taken from us and does not look like your contribution is significant and you may have to relieve them? Is that true? All I want is for you for you to be glorified for you to be lifted all i want is for you for you to be glorified for you to be lifted one more time all i want is for you for you to be glorified, for you to be lifted. Listen, there are people who donate themselves willingly and say, Lord, if for any reason you are looking for a man, I may not seem like much, but one thing you can count on me is that I'm available. You would see weak and ordinary people but there will be mighty people that God will use. And sometimes you wonder and add everything and the equation does not add up. Because you see, whoever is committed to serving the purposes of the king is the one who secures his interest. There are no biases. He loves everybody, but he's only committed to those who are sincere and available to serve his purposes now this is the dimension of the kingdom that many believers do not know and so many believers do not know that the king himself has a desire the king himself has an agenda have you ever tried serving a rich man when a rich man in our world today when a rich man says i'm testy you will run with your own money you will not say sir can i have the money you will run with because you you know what you are doing even if you are a businessman 
you will run with your own money and go and buy it and serve him because if that man reaches into his pocket he will bless you according to his riches not according to what you have done he will bless you according to his perception of what you have done that same man can look at you and say you're a responsible gentleman what do you do I say we're well, just managing see me tomorrow and that's the end of it are we together yes so those who look like they are great in this kingdom are not great because they earned anything in themselves they are simply people who have become foolish enough to listen not just to reach for the hand of the king but to reach for the heart of the king what is it that you desire oh god even listen even in our world today i hope i'm blessing someone even in our world today when you find someone who is not after your money or your influence but is genuinely after your heart it almost becomes a charm like relationship you find out that it, that person may even be your house help and you get closer to that person sometimes even than your physical children when you want to give some money to keep you love your children but you you suspect that you, they, you, they, you can't take them to police station you can't sue them to court and they are aware so you now trust somebody come my dear daughter can you keep this for me and now sometimes they wonder and say what kind of unfair thing is this we are the children of this man and yet he's trusting this person because in this kingdom you see when god loves everybody but he does not trust everybody trust is not an impartation there is a track record of faithfulness the bible says moreover it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful is someone learning this is very important so when it comes to fulfilling the desire and the mandate of king jesus please everybody listen the king has an agenda and every responsible citizen who wants to see power, wealth, influence. I did tell you yesterday and let me remind you again that everything that flows from the king to the saints is with respect to his will. Do not forget this. The prosperity that flows from the king to you. That's why there is a difference between wealth and kingdom wealth. There is a difference between wisdom, Sophia, natural human wisdom, and divine wisdom. Everything that flows from the king to the saints has a mandate to honor his will. With or without God, you can use the law of value and all the laws that you have been taught here, and you can access some level and measure of wealth. But there are certain things you cannot take away, like the sorrow component. But it is the blessing of the Lord, my Bible says, that make it rich and can extract away the sorrow component. Are we together? Everything that flows from the king to you, I remind you again, was supposed to empower you to fulfill his will. Lo, I come in the volume of the book. Even Jesus said, to do thy will, not to do my agenda. Jesus was very vocal as to the fact that his entire journey on earth was to do the will of the Father. In that similitude, that you walk upon the earth and you say, I have no agenda of my own. That everything I find myself doing is to bring joy and to bring um, satisfaction and fulfillment to the King, to the Father, even to Jesus. Are we learning this morning? So the Bible calls us ambassadors. The Bible calls us witnesses. There's no time to do this discussion. I have a brief session this morning. But then it's important for you to know that an ambassador does not promote his own agenda. Any ambassador that is caught promoting his own agenda will be punished from the mother nation. Is that true? There's a U.S. ambassador in Nigeria. There are many embassies in Nigeria. And when you get into the U.S. embassy, if you were blindfolded and they opened your eyes, you would not even know you are in Nigeria. Because the entire, the physical space was designed to reflect the mother nation. They do not pay the staff in the U.S. embassy, at least the ones who were brought in, they do not pay them in Naira. Because there's none of their business with the economy of the nation happening there. They are still in touch. Are we together now? Yes. This is very powerful. 
they are there to promote the interest. They love you, but they are there to promote the interest of the nation that sends them. Are we together? So, you must carry this mentality that I am on earth, I am in Lagos, but I am here as an ambassador. That means everything that concerns Jesus is my business. You don't have to invite me. The moment you mention Jesus and his program, I am automatically invited. So, anywhere I see sinners, I am invited. Are we together? Are we learning? Now, let me tell you three things and then I tell you three other things and we're done. The program of God, please write this down. God's kingdom advancement program is threefold. I want you to listen carefully. God's kingdom advancement program is threefold. Is it alright if I define for you my concept of kingdom advancement? Will that be fine? I define kingdom advancement as every and any scriptural mechanism that is deployed to enthrone Christ and his purposes in the hearts of men and then across every strata of human activities. Let me take it one more time. I define kingdom advancement as any and every scriptural mechanism, any and every scriptural mechanism deployed are we together? To enthrone Christ and his purposes first in the hearts of men, then across every strata of human activities. This is what we call kingdom advance. So every time we say kingdom advance, in simple terms, we're talking about the deploying of every scriptural method that ultimately leads to the enthroning of the Christ in the hearts of men, then across the cosmos, across every strata of human activities. Are we together now? And then I'm saying that that kingdom advancement, we call it different names. We call it thy kingdom come. We call it kingdom advancement program. Others even call it God's end time agenda. You are saying one and the same thing. And that it is divided into three. Number one, please write. The first dimension of God's program if you really want to please God if you really want to spend your life serving the king these are the three things that your life should be about are you ready number one world evangelization please write world evangelization this has nothing to do with whether you are an evangelist or called into the fivefold ministry the great commission was a mandate that was given to everyone by the king himself he did not mandate a prophet, so you can't say the prophet slept or forgot or prophesied in part. It was Jesus himself that commissioned and brought the agenda of the great commission. Are we together? World evangelization. What does that mean? The harvest in simple terms. Bringing nations to the obedience of the faith. That anyone who finds himself right now participating in any scriptural way to make the world this harvest, this agenda of God, of world evangelization come to pass, I can assure you, you have secured the backing of the king. Number two, what is the second dimension of kingdom advancement? Are you ready? The equipping and the maturing of the saints. The equipping and the maturing of the saints. That means that through your contribution, you help the church, the ecclesia, the body of Christ to become men and women of stature and knowledge. Is someone learning? Whether it is through a book you write, whether it's through your giving, whether it is by setting up a local assembly, whether it is through your labor and and love in doctrine whatever contribution you make that can help believers attain to a point of stature and maturity god so desires for his church to be matured that even after his finished work he gave gifts to men he gave some apostles and prophets are we together 
and evangelists and pastors and teachers Ephesians chapter 4 says why he says for the equipping the maturing of the saints that the saints now matured will do the work of the ministry to the end that all of us will come into a complete man the fullness of the stature of the measure of Christ the Bible says not tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine and the slight of men wherein they lie to deceive so God desires that the church because the church is the only instrument he has to birth his purposes and if the axe head be blonde there's going to be a lot of energy that is dissipated are we together look at the vast potential army that King Jesus has on earth but not much is accomplished because most believers are still babes it took 12 men mentored by Jesus himself and they took their world by storm there were 120 in the upper room when the Holy Ghost fell and ladies and gentlemen from 120 people a harvest of 3,000 people came in one night and from 3,000 people they grew until they became a threat to society but what formula did they use Acts chapter 2 and verse 42 I will show you how the church grew the Bible says and they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine are we together and in fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers take note of these four things the 3,000 that were saved were not just left to go home. They continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and in fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. And those ordinary people became mighty men from city to city. Every time persecution came, it only multiplied the effect. And they scattered to cities to the extent that when Paul was in prison, he was not interested in his release. He was interested in a notepad and a pen. Right from prison. He will say, I'm in prison and I've heard that some of you are deviating from what I've spent my time teaching you. Let me assure you I'm coming back. And when I come back, can you imagine? Look at the mentality of such a man. They killed him. He came back to life. Too important to die. Not just claiming I shall not die. He proved it with his life. A man in prison. In prison your prayer should be to come out. Not Paul. Paul was in prison and which church have we not written to? So every time they came to visit him. How are you? He said leave that issue. My desire is the king. And God said what kind of man is this? Hmm. Are we together? So when you talk about the great apostle Paul. It was not just that it was in his destiny to write to third of the New Testament. There is no prophecy in the Bible that prophesies that the man Paul will write to third of the New Testament. It was the degree of his loyalty, his availability. Are we together now? That multiplied that kind of grace. That even the Peter and the other apostles, they, had, they first rejected him. But later on they said, listen, we can't fight this man. We are not stupid people. We, we were mentored by God, but we have seen a level of sacrifice and discernment. They had to extend the right hand of fellowship to him. That means in this conference, there are people who are supposedly ordinary, who came from a family that does not seem to have any pedigree, but by your submission and your loyalty to the king, you will touch something in the spirit that will elevate you in a way that you will become a wonder and a marvel to your world. It is true. This is how men rise. The desire of the king. For me to live is Christ, he says, and to die is gain. Can you imagine that? At the zenith of his apostolic ministry, here's what he had to say. That I may know him. Not that I may be great. Not that I may have more things. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Out of the 12 disciples, 
there was one who survived anything until they did not even know what to do with him. They threw him in the Isle of Patmos. He's called John the Beloved, not John the Anointed, not John the Powerful. When all the other virtues failed, love remained. The one who chose to love, not just to use God, was the one that fire could have no power over. They threw him, according to Bible history, in boiling oil. He refused to burn. So the people just didn't know what to do with him. And do you know what it means to try to kill somebody and he does not die? And they threw him and left him there. That's how he wrote the book of Revelations. Ladies and gentlemen, when you read from scripture the lives of these men and women it was not just that they were uniquely isolated like that not all of them had the election of grace there is a concept of the election of grace but you see there are many people who through availability and the genuineness of their loyalty they have attained onto states and levels in the spirit that men will look at them and be dumbfounded an example of such a person was elisha the next prophet was never supposed to be Elisha after Elijah because ethically the prophet will come from those he was mentoring. He had a school of prophets. So the next prophet should come from there. But he found a man who was loyal. He found a man who was surrendered and he found a man who was obedient. He received a double portion. You can see that even with men, this same principle applies. Are we together? That means the major reason why it looks like God cannot do much with men. I'm telling you, it's not your background. It's not the kind of curses that have surrounded you. It's not true. It's that God is yet to trust your loyalty. God is yet to trust your, your submission, your level of surrenderedness. And God is yet to trust your obedience. I can tell you from scripture and respectfully speaking, I can tell you from experience, when God finds a man he can trust, you become a wonder to your world. You may have heard me say it many times that the Lord told me many years ago and said, son, if you will let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. Yes. And I believe this with all my heart. Are we together? If you will let men see me. Now, watch this. I don't know if I gave this example the last time I was here or any of, of the meeting you may have listened to. I'm not dropping my Bible here. My Bible is here. So the center of attraction is the top of this, this uh, pulpit. Am I right? But is it really true that you can look at the top without looking at what holds it? This is King Jesus. This is you. The goal is not to be the point of attraction. The point is to focus on him. That the world will see him. But it's impossible. This thing is standing here only because of the efficiency of this. That means if Jesus wants to be lifted higher on earth. It's not only him that will rise. Whoever is holding him and the banner will also rise. Are you seeing how it works? So when your life is committed to bringing glory to the king. He lifts himself by lifting you. It's called the reflection principle. You find that in John 17 and verse 1. Jesus was praying now. The Bible records that he lifted up his eyes to the heavens. And he prayed thus. Give us John 17 and verse 1. Here's what he said. Father, the hour is come. He said, glorify thy son. That thy son may bring glory to you. Listen again. Glorify thy son. Glorify Joshua Selman. Glorify Calvary Bible Church. Glorify your family. Glorify your lineage. Only that you get glory back. But here's what a lot of us do. Have you watched little children who beg you? They come and say, Mommy, Daddy, and they point their hands. And when you drop maybe something and you say, Give me back. They hold it back. That's what a lot of people do. So we use fasting. We use prayer. We use all kinds of things to say, Lord, I've been waiting. Send this power. And then God will. Anything God gives you initially is not all he intends to give you. I can tell you, God never gives you all he intends to give you at once. It is not how the kingdom works. Everything he gives you is a test. As much as that money was when you received it, it is still a test. So 10 million came because you cried and said you were a kingdom financier and it tested you. 
and he watched you for one month nobody knew where you went to and God kept crying like Adam my son where are you where are you where are you I don't see you in my presence again I don't see you in my house God is calling you men are calling you and then when he's finished you come back and say God I'm here again he said no 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 I'm not here. my love for you has not changed but we need to do something with this trust thing this is what is responsible for this balloon success you see that people rise up and then just come down because they do not know that you maintain your stand with the king by remaining ever trustworthy ever he gave one five talent the bible is full of the character of god that when you study you can learn god he gave one five talent he gave one two talent he gave one one that means he has more than 13 or more than eight if he gave one five he gave one two he gave one one it meant that he had a treasury that was a lot more than that then the bible said he went on a long journey and left them then he came back look at the character of god you would think because he has so much he will not come back when he fed the people he said gather the crumbs i don't waste let them go but gathered what would he do with the crumbs when he could multiply it The one who had five was a faithful steward. He went about doing his business, made five more. The one who had two brought two more. But the guy who had one, you see, he went to bury his talent. You bury seeds, not talents. No, you multiply talents, you refine them. But you went to go and bury the talent and it did not grow because it was not a seed. And when he came back, he called all of them and said, all right, you are stewards not owners so give me your stewardship oh i had five i've gotten five more he said you've passed the test the goal was not talent i want to give you authority over nations i taught you yesterday that when god gives you authority over things it is the least level of spiritual authority that you can command resources you can command the material world believe me as mighty as that is that is the least level of authority when you show faithfulness in that unrighteous mammon then he will commit to you the true riches of the kingdom are we together now he will grant you access to the hearts of men when God gives you authority over men and over nations like Gideon you will sound a shofar and 33,000 people will come because you have authority this see these rankings in the spirit have physical expressions you can know who is standing where and the greatest authority the bible records that can be trusted to man is authority over god's program it's like it's like pastor traveling and he calls you and he says for the next um I want something to happen an empowerment program to happen here and you are in charge that is a level of trust indeed hello beloved in Christ we hope this message was a blessing to you I would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.